Money Control presents Pitchcraft in collaboration with Seed to Scale. As the name suggests, this is a show where we are going to deconstruct the very first pitch deck of some of India's most successful startups. We are going to feature Spinny, an auto retailing platform backed by some of the world's biggest investors, last valued at $1.8 billion. But how did their journey start with a pitch deck? Here's a primer on Spinny before we get into the conversation. Founded in 2015 by Neeraj Singh, Ramanchu Mahor and Mohit Gupta, Spinny helps buy and sell pre-owned cars online. Sellers can schedule an inspection and get an offer for their car. Buyers can browse through the online inventory, view vehicle conditions, select a car of their choice and schedule a test drive. The road to building a unicorn wasn't easy. This is in fact the third startup Neeraj has founded after the previous two folded. The experience has taught him to have a clear vision. Singh grew up in Dalton Ganj, a town in Jharkhand, studied in Hindi medium and started conversing in English only a few years ago. Spinny has raised $530 million from 34 institutional and 36 angel investors to date. It counts Sachin Tendulkar as its backer. Its cap table includes the likes of Axel, Bloom, Tiger Global, Avenir Group Capital, General Catalyst, Elevation, among others. Swiggy's founder, Sri Harsha Majeti, has also invested in the company. Spinny last raised $283 million in November 2021 in a funding round led by Tiger Global at a valuation of $2.11 billion. While Spinny may be a unicorn now, it took four years to crack its first round of funding. What role did the pitch tech play in Spinny's journey? Let's find out. That was Spinny for you. It would have given you an idea of what the company does, uh, who its competitors are, what its key business proposition is. But to understand more about how it's evolved all these years, we're very happy to have Neeraj Singh, the co-founder and CEO of Spinny. Does this look familiar to you? Yeah, yeah. This is like insanely, you know, nostalgic. <laughs> so this is a big reveal. Spinny's pitch deck created when? In 2018? Yes, mid-2018. And this was when you were raising your... Uh... Series A round of funding. But tell me about that, Neeraj, because Spinny, in a sense, is your third venture. You yeah. founded two other startups before that, right. uh, Locus Education and, and then uh, Tech Monkey. Yes. So from EdTech to Media Tech, tech. to uh, Auto Tech. Yes. How did you go about creating a deck for auto tech, what were your reference points? Um, take us through the process before we delve into what this has. So basically, I put the customer at the center that uh, what is the problem customers are facing in the market and uh, how big the problem is, how special this purchase is for them, what kind of expectation they have in terms of quality of the product, overall transaction experience, accountability from the seller, uh, and, and also seamlessness in the transaction process and what kind of digital integrations. So we put all of that in the center while creating this deck because we were clear that, you know, this is a very special and uh, aspirational and emotional purchase for people. And they have very high expectations from this particular transaction. And the way they were treated in the market earlier mm -hmm. was exactly opposite. So that is the like, you know, that, 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 that theme is at the center of this entire deck. Right. Um, do you want to tell us about how long it took for you to make it, it this? It went through uh, multiple iterations, hmm. Chandra, right? Because hmm. we started Spinny uh, in late 2015 only. And uh, it's not that in 2018 we were trying to raise funds for the first time. Hmm. So I, I tried really hard to do our Series A, even in 2016, then 2017. 
then 2018 and our series a was closed only in uh, april 2019 so uh, after having multiple you know uh, shots at it i realized that you know what what kind of a story to, storytelling hmm. should come out from your deck and how important having a good deck is uh, maybe you know uh, early in our journey maybe uh, in 2016 in 2017 i was not uh, giving enough like enough emphasis and i was not uh, realizing the basically the strength of storytelling through deck hmm. but when i realized it right then uh, i i had my own realizations and after that i i tried to put the best foot forward while creating this deck and uh, it won't be even uh, an iota of exaggeration if i tell you that i took almost 4 5 months to like create this deck wow so i i believe that uh, having a good deck is insanely important because uh, it it is a part of your storytelling of course goes without selling that there should be a solid substance in your business hmm. right the the kind of value that you that you intend to your customers and all the your groundwork all your preparedness behind that should be there that is like that 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 should be like table stakes and even if you have all those things in place then also you need to ensure that uh, there is a good storytelling Mm. you know uh wherever like you go whatever you do so you have to do some storytelling with your customers so that they are able to understand your offering your value proposition what you are trying to do for them in in a in a most simple and most effective manner you need to do storytelling for your team members while you are building your team mm. you need to do you the storytelling with potential investors while you are trying to raise capital so storytelling is a very uh you know central and integral part of being a founder and building up company and uh, you know while you are making your deck it, it is a kind of manifestation of storytelling only mm. and while making your deck you will go through like serious introspections you will go through all your assumptions hypotheses and it it is it is it is an opportunity to step back and reflect so so even if you don't have to share a deck with any investor right then i think just for your clarity right i think everybody should should go through this deck making process because it is it is an opportunity to step back and reflect and and think through all your hypotheses again and again and again be being more clear uh, regarding what you are trying to build why this needs to be built and for whom this needs to be built got it right. got it and uh, if i talked about some functional aspects of deck right so maybe you are meeting some particular investor from a particular firm and you are able to explain everything to that particular person but you need to understand that that person has to be, even if that person is completely sold hmm. right on you that person has to do internal selling also that hmm. person has to build internal alignment also and and that person won't be able to share or tell everything as it is so that person also needs a reference right a, a reference material right to build internal alignment to build internal buy in so a deck plays you know multiple roles right in your fundraise and the and and one very important point i'm trying to make here is that deck is not limited just to fundraising mm. right mm. It, it it is it is an opportunity for you to step back and do serious introspections do serious reflections and and keep keep sharpening your focus and your clarity that's a very interesting point uh, from neeraj and i hope pitchcraft will serve as a guiding light for many entrepreneurs because as he said um a deck gives you a chance to introspect to iterate on you know where you are where you want to be fundraising of course is one aspect of it but all the other points he mentioned that you know he went back questioned many of your assumptions yes. uh, before putting it there and as you said not just the vc who's meeting you but the vc who has to build internal alignment exactly. in his or her own yeah. form you you so, have to hmm. solve his or her life also <laughs> right uh, do you want to take us through uh, the first few slides and you know so when i google you know what a pitch deck is supposed to be there are so many templates available online you know that you start with a problem statement a solution a size of the market you know uh, market size competition and then of course your own financials and where you want to be so did you have this mental model in mind that slide 1 to 5 will be this 5 to 10 will be this and did you sit and work on it yourself or you got some person to work on so my first two startups so both of those startups were bootstrap hmm. i never built a deck 
in in those startups right so you, i start, you didn't need one I, i didn't need one yeah so and uh, when i started uh, building decks at spinny right so initially i tried to follow the templates available in the market Hmm. but uh, i was not getting convinced with the kind of outcome i was getting by following those templates and of course those those decks were not even you know producing any result for us in terms of <laughs> fundraising or anything and i was trying to be very clear that it shouldn't be a very lengthy one hmm. right you don't need to do a all out information assault on anybody <laughs> right the key the key takeaways you need to understand that if somebody is going through your deck and once that person is like completely through it what are the key takeaways you want to deliver what are the key takeaways you want to get registered on that person's mind so in your case yeah what were the three key takeaways that you wanted your deck to project to anyone who looks at it like if i look at it what are the three things that should stand out for me so for me the the most important basically take away i was trying to create for the people who were going through our deck was what exactly we are trying to build here hmm. for whom we are trying to build this and why this needs to be built for them hmm. right so what exactly you are trying to build so before going into too much of the details i think your mission statement right this should not be any template driven mission statement right this should come from your heart right and this should come from lots of introspection what exactly you are trying to build it right and what what purpose yeah. that business that company will serve so if you look at our mission yeah. statement right so yeah so spinny's mission statement is to help people fulfill their dreams through seamless fair and quick car buying experience exactly so hmm. if you look at you know the first the first part of the mission statement right so our mission statement is to help help people fulfill their dreams so in a way we are trying to say that how important this purchase is for people mm-hmm. and we relate with them we understand how important this purchase is for them hence we will go to any mile to solve this particular transaction for them so first part is very clear that this is a very important purchase for them number one hence if it is broken then it should definitely be solved mm-hmm. second we understand how important this purchase is so we will go to any mile irrespective of background we will build the expertise but the most interesting part here is that we understand how important this purchase is for people so we will go to any mile to solve this transaction for them right and then how how are we going to solve it and what are the key characteristics we want to like you know achieve by bringing up this solution is like you know making this transaction seamless because car buying is a very complex very long journey yeah. so making this transaction seamless fair right full transparency guaranteed quality fair pricing full accountability so seamless transaction process eliminating or reducing the complexity from the process making it a fair and making it a, like a quick car buying experience did you also in a sense feel that you know once you've laid down this mission this shouldn't change 5 years down the line or i mean you've sort of stayed true it to that it will keep evolving right, right? but before hmm. going there you know i would like to reiterate here is that while you are like introducing your company or 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 a startup right or your solution for the first time you know in in uh, like maybe first or second slide of the deck so you should you should be clear that without going into the further details if somebody is having a quick look of just this particular slide hmm. that person should have a sense right of what exactly you are trying to build right what exactly you are trying to solve and for whom you are trying to solve it Mm. even without without before or before going into the further details right you should not think that you know as that person will keep going through the further details that person will figure out right so so what exactly is trying to be built i think that that clarity should be there got it for the got person it. going through that deck because once initial, you initial your first two three slides are your real pitch right remaining slides are reiteration and 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 winning the confidence got it so the first two three slides you would say were the most crucial for you so i was trying to basically communicate that it's a big market and uh, further growing but at the same time completely broken 
सो बिग अपॉर्चुनिटी बट कम्प्लीटली ब्रोकन सो समी शुड सॉल्व इट बट हु आर द टारगेट ऑडियंस राइट एंड वट इज देयर एक्सपेक्टेशन सो वट काइंड ऑफ सोल्यूशन वन नीड्स टू ब्रिंग सो दैट इज विदाउट गोइंग टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ द मॉडल्स और आर आर रियल एक्शनेबल्स आर आर प्लान राइट और मोनिटाइजेशन सो दिस हाई लेवल क्लैरिटी आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू लाइक बिल्ड इन इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द डेक राइट सो द फर्स्ट फ्यू स्लाइड्स वर एसेंशली अबाउट स्पिनीज मिशन the size of the market the opportunity but also the fact that it's broken therefore there's a space for a player like spinny right, and target audience also and the next few would be what you bring in your unique How value you are proposition going to do this, right right which is where you spoke about you know that 200 point test yes. how so, to make it more reliable how to improve trust with the customer exactly. which you believe was broken yeah. during the car buying process right. so what usps you will bring right hmm. to to meet the expectation of the customer and what kind of capabilities you will build at the back end to basically to be in a position to deliver those usps right and from there you go you go to the details or what happens after that or it you you know delve into the financials or you so go into first expansion part is, plans. first part is basically uh, what you were trying to build and why this needs to be built and for whom it is needed to be built hmm. and the second part is how you are going to do that and the third part is uh, a certain validation of that hmm. right so hmm. of certain validation of your how your approach right your approach to you know uh, to basically build this is, is working on the ground right so third part is 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 validation part but what i found missing or what was conspicuous by its absence you know you didn't see anything about your rivals or what they were doing what you will do differently because when spinny was founded there were already legacy players in the market right there was a car trade with which i think started sometime in 2009 there was a car dekho there was a cars 24 so want you worried that the first question that you will be asked is this is a fourth or the fifth player and and, and i think there was also olx and quicker olx so, quicker trubel yes gozumo drum it, it was a super crowded market yeah. so didn't you anticipate Nadi, lots of players yeah but i don't see a slide on the competitive landscape or how you're going to stand out yeah so uh, of course when we were trying to raise our series a throughout 2016 2017 2018 mm-hmm. that was the biggest pushback we used to get that this market is overcrowded overfunded done and dusted there is no place for any new guy you're wasting your time right so there is no point uh doing anything in this category but uh you know i was very clear about one thing that this is a really really very important emotional and aspirational purchase for people one of the like uh three four key purchases you do in your life so a typical uh indian you know uh journey for like 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 most of the indians ghar gaadi uh, you come from yeah. a small town you try to you know study very hard to go to a good college then again uh, you study very hard you know at a college to get a good job then you start earning and whenever you start earning the the first thing you try to buy is is like buying your first car mm-hmm. and you have been dreaming about that since your childhood right so you, so buying your first car is like very special very emotional aspirational and it is also a certain kind of unlock for you right that okay i've done this now i can start planning or dreaming about the next big item so it is a kind of unlock not egotic but unlock for you so and when you start doing better in your uh, career then you buy a better car then you get married you buy a house so buying your first car is very special i would mm-hmm. say one of the three four key purchases uh, you do in your life so it was very clear to me that uh, this is a very special purchase but completely broken and uh, all the players i studied at that point of time i was not convinced that uh, they were able to relate with that emotion of the customer hmm. or, or the hmm. buyers hmm. and they were trying their best to solve for that everybody has their own rationale of operating in this category but the kind of rational we were coming with we found that rational missing with the most of the players you know operating at that point of time and hence i thought that you know we will we will come to the category with right reasons and with all the hard work rigor perseverance we will keep executing and we were confident that we will be able to build a corner for ourselves 
-hmm. We were not thinking about leadership or or anything else at that point of time. We were just thinking that you know that the problem statement is real, and uh, people in the market are not relating to that emotion. That emotion is completely unattended. So hence, uh, there is a room for us. And if we operate right away, then we will definitely create a corner for ourselves. And once we are able to create a corner for ourselves, then we will start thinking how to keep expanding that corner. Got it. So um, we 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 never talked about hmm. competition, you know, while raising our initial rounds. Too much of templatization is like is 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 what backfires in most of the cases. I believe uh, every person is unique, right? Every company is unique. Everybody has their own story. So no template can do justice to to that, right? So everybody's story is unique. So only that person, you know, can figure out how that story should be best told. That's a great point. Yeah. That don't focus too so much I, on. And in, I, I keep telling this to my, you know, VC friends also that, you know, don't templateize founders. Every person is unique. Every business is unique. Every category is unique. Every problem statement is unique. Every business model is unique. So too much of templateization. Don't template problematic. Former, uh, founders is a great uh, yeah. point, Neeraj. But when you were preparing this, were there any other reference points? For instance, did you refer to auto tech companies, say in China or US, or other auto tech companies in India? No, I've not talked about any benchmarks, right? So India hmm. is very unique, big market, growing market, right? In Indian consumer, the way we feel about cars, people in US don't feel about the cars that way. It is more or less an utility. Hmm. But but for us, you know, I'll, I'll show you. Every day we are seeing, you know, ten members, fifteen members of the same family coming to take the delivery of the car, doing lots of puja. Many people getting emotional. So 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 this is a very uh, you know unique uh, perspective to to like our, our our society. So there is no point uh, following any benchmark. Market is big. It is bound to keep uh, keep getting bigger. It is a direct function of. Economy, the the personal passenger car penetration per capita in India is still twenty six twenty seven, hmm. right? So while while in advanced, you know, societies that number is north of eight hundred, so insanely uh, large headroom available, right? Even at the current size of the market, and and with the economy, the market will also keep growing. If somebody is not sold on Indian economy, then I cannot, uh, you know, I cannot sell. Car market or used car market to that person ever, and if somebody is already sold on Indian economy, then I don't need to sell the potential of the Indian car market or the Indian used car market. Got it. Do you still go back to this deck sometimes to see where you were and where you are today? Uh, no. So basically, this uh, how, after how long? How much time are you seeing this deck? Uh, after four years. Right? After four years. Uh, wow. Right. So you don't sort of go back to it. This is where we were, and this is where we are now. You heard out Neeraj's perspective, you know, from the lens of a founder on why a pitch deck is important. But let's also get uh, the investor perspective, the VC view. Why are decks so important to VCs when they meet a founder, or you know, when they're about to decide on whether to invest, not invest? Um, why does it stand out for you? What do you look for when you meet founders, and you know, when you ask them for their decks? Okay, thank you. Super excited to be here with you both. Um, I think investor perspective kind of echoes what Neeraj talked about. Um, he talked about taking six months to shape the deck. Why is that important? You're probably going to get um, a half an hour to one hour meeting with that investor, and in that that half an hour to one hour, you want to impress upon them that this is a company they want to be spending more time in. So, having a sharp story helps that. Mm -hmm. So, deck is nothing but a tool to enable that. So, the more thought you put into that, the sharper your story is going to be. So, that's why it's super important to have a really good deck and get going with that. Happy to jump into any of the aspects that we look for. If that'll be helpful, right? right. Yeah. So just to re recap, Anand, you know, he spoke about the yeah. first few slides. Yeah. Um, and he spent a lot of time on just deciding what his mission statement would be, and you know how the rest of it evolved from that. So if I have to break this up into sections, I think the first few slides are essentially the problem that Spinny is trying to solve. 
uh, the potential of the market, why there is a space for Spinny to occupy one corner, um, how they will go about it. Then, you know, um, a slide on the team. So it's a very strong team that has experience across Flipkart, Adobe, Airtel and so on. And then you have a whole set of slides, you know, on uh, financials and projections. How many cars they are selling per month, what their margins are, uh, where they will be, what their revenue stream is going to look like. Which of these was the most important for you, if you have to look at this section wise? I think there are a few things that almost every investor looks for and I definitely, the template hasn't changed in the 15 plus Though years. Though he said don't look for templates. No, template on what you look for huh. across different areas. And I'll talk about the areas. And within that, you can't templatize. I'll, I'll explain that. I fully agree with Neeraj on that. So the first thing you want to look for is the team. Is this a team that is really passionate about the problem they're solving? In hmm. the case of Neeraj, that stood out like anything. He really wanted to so solve the used car buying experience. And we can come back to that. And the whole team was engineered around that, how to make that beautiful. Because you're, like, both the founders and the investors are going to be in a 5-10 year relationship if things work out. If it doesn't work out, yes, the startup doesn't work out. If it works out, you want to be working with each other for a long period of time. So the team and, and how you work with the team is super important. And, and there you cannot templatize. That can be a founder who comes from any part of the globe, I would say, as Axel. In this case, any part of India. He came from a smaller town in India and that was a very interesting story for me to hear. We spent a lot of time talking about all that. Right? The first time he pitched me, it was in Hindi and my Hindi is very bad. So I said, Neeraj, I get these part, but the numbers part I'm not getting. Can you please help me? Right? So uh, I think it's founders come in different uh, ways, different mm -hmm. shapes. And that's the beauty of the startup ecosystem. We really enjoy meeting them, starting with that. And then what is the unique problem they're solving? And is this a real problem in today's environment at that particular time? And in their case, it was used car buying. And, and if you look at the first few slides, that sets it up very well. There was a Flipkart and a Swiggy and other companies that trained consumers to buy online. And there was no one training consumers how to think and buy a car, auto, their first big purchase online. Even houses, there were experiences, but it wasn't very well solved. And how do you solve that in a way that there's a high level of trust in that buying experience. So if you look, the first few pages go into that. We started always with the team, getting to know them when an investor. So I would encourage you, uh, any founder listening, to first start probably with the team and explain how he, they came into the problem, how they're solving it, and how what's unique about it. Then comes, is it a large market? How are you going about scaling that? What's the unit economics? What's the traction, financial things that you talked about? But the first section, you'll have to get it right in the first mm. 10 minutes, I would say, so that the investor, and for that matter, when you're pitching an employee, if you're trying to hire a co-founder, if you're trying to hire a employee, you still need to be able to pitch. So as a founder, that's this is one of the things that you keep refining and refining. And, uh, and we, Neeraj had nailed it by the time. So yeah, storytelling so. has to be on point in the first three, four slides. I would say first 15, 20 minutes, mm. get the core story out if possible. Right, and not everyone gets it in the first step, but just keep working on it. Right, so it's an ongoing journey. Right, so in your seed round, you might be somewhere. It's a it's a learning experience, and ask for feedback. Right, so you are whenever you're pitching, you can ask the investor, how did I do? More informally, what what resonated? Just like what you're asking, what stood out? You could ask that of who you're talking to, what appealed to you, and then you you use that. Right, it's like any storytelling. Got it. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned he worked on it for six months. Tell us about that. Uh, he went and camped with the designer is what I heard. Right? Talk, yeah. A basic version was already in place. Yeah. And for six months, I just kept refining it. Right. Mm. And every time uh, I used to have a relook and I used to find some gaps. So there is always room to improve and make it more and more sharper. This is like the rewriting, writing and rewriting yeah. uh, process, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. How that, to that, cut out the fluff and yes, keep it and sharp. Yes, and that helps your execution also. Hmm. It hmm. will give you more and more clarity to execute, right, what, you know, on, on, on And were you involved in every aspect that, you know, this design should come here? It should be this font and this font yes, size yes, and yes. order of slides. Yes. Were you that, I mean, the attention to detail, was it that high? Exactly. 
I was using my friend who is a designer as a tool <laughs> because I, I didn't know how to use those tools. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this percentage should be in bigger number and exactly everything whatever like you are seeing. Like the NPS score right? should be bold in blue. <laughs> everything. What kind of icons? Which font? What font color? Hmm. You know what kind of lines to use to draw the graph? Right. All kinds of representation. Everything. So when did you finally feel like? This is it, and I'm going to pitch. No, while this deck was is a work in progress, I I was like uh, already pitching it to people, right? Hmm. But uh, around around uh, in in July 18, I I felt that whatever I want to tell, right? Hmm. This has everything. Whatever uh, you want to articulate. Yeah, whatever I want to articulate, this has everything, hmm. and. Uh, this has a very effective and and crisp articulation so maybe there isn't a lot of room to improve it significantly further right so in in july i got that confidence and uh, then it, it it got shared with anand and uh, it immediately generated some interest but earlier versions were not that that good so um, when did you all first connect was it a cold email or you all knew each other from this is a good question so we we have this thing called uh, thesis led investments so in auto we have had a thesis in the past so we had uh, we had a person in our investment team called karan shah so he worked on a thesis in auto and and he came and started present presenting it to us the team and said this is a very interesting thing and can you uh, can we should look at it and so he went and met every team and said neeraj is He really, really liked Neeraj. We met the other teams as well. Everyone was doing interesting things, right? Different things, but we really liked what Neeraj was doing. So it was a thesis-led investment where we knew the space. We had done a bunch of work around it, and we had met the other bunch of companies in that space. And then uh, so in that journey, we had met Neeraj, and Neeraj has connects into many of the team members at Axel even before, right? So there was pre-existing relationships, but in earnest, it started in that July. time frame and it took a few months and then we committed probably in october november and then investment happened in 2019 got yeah. it yeah. um did you face pushback anand ki okay spinny isn't it like car trade there is already a car dekho there is already a cast 24 so there is already an uh, quicker there is already an olx so this is player 7 or 8 why would you want to invest can they come from behind because typically platform companies internet companies you know it's a winner takes all scenario more than 2 3 players is very hard how did you sort of build a thesis on spinny or what gave you conviction yeah. that you know this can be among the top 2 3 players in the market because it was a very crowded market then yeah it was a crowded market but no one was thinking consumer back what is the real consumer pain point they want a high quality car at the lowest price let's hmm. let's that's very clear So how do you do that? Most people were connecting, including Spinny in the early days, were connecting buyers and sellers. And in that thing, the seller wants to get rid of the car, because if you ever try to sell a car, you're done with it. You want a new car, so you're selling it. You don't care. You you'll do whatever to sell, right? Whereas the buyer wants to keep it. So how do you really make that relationship work? You have to buy the car, fix it, and sell it. It's a huge undertaking. So what Nidhas and Spinny were doing then is. to solve it the hard way they were like in 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 a way through their network ensuring that the best quality cars came into the platform and were fixed and then then sold right so that whole process in a very compliant way to do that it took a lot of effort and and the, they had solved that hard problem which really appealed to us as investors got it um you know compared to what they presented in the deck to where they are now um what has changed and what hasn't changed see what has changed is the team has continued to grow is added a lot of really high quality people the companies has scaled it was only gurgaon at that time right Ma- yeah. mainly around uh, we went and visited the places where they were selling so that has scaled across 15 plus cities now so a lo- lot of those things the company has scaled a bit, uh, quite a bit many of what he is talking about in the deck has happened in terms of the revenue streams and everything what has not changed i would say is the the hunger to continue solving the problem and the and and the culture with which neeraj is building so i think 
he stayed the same humble amazing person he's been like i'm not saying just because he's here <laughs> but that's an important thing founders might change over time teams might change i think important to maintain the culture and and the passion for solving that problem you started out and that's true even today as um, 2018 so how did you go about deciding that you know this is an investor who's a good fit on my cap table so before starting spinny uh, uh for some time uh for 10 11 months i did uh, angel investments very actively hmm. and uh, because of that uh, i had a sense about the ecosystem hmm. right that uh, from within what kind of dna different firms have and i was uh, very clear that excel will be an ideal partner for me because i knew that uh, my category is overcrowded overfunded so it will take some time for me to you know things start working out maybe i'll have to go through you know more pivots more iterations and it will definitely take you know lot of effort lot of time and lot of patience for everybody on the cap table to start seeing some results and start seeing some green shoots and some real progress so i really wanted that uh, the the investor who joins who who joins the cap table with a significant ownership and uh, with a strong voice on the board uh should be uh, equally convinced about the opportunity we are chasing the kind of vision we have so there should be absolute alignment with the vision and the approach going forward and uh, there should be a lot of patience also if you start getting a uh, desperate very early right if you don't have right level of patience so then uh, then you might become you might uh, end up becoming the reason to derail the company Wow. right so i was very sure that i want that kind of partner and the partner who has a lot of uh, at the same time the partner who has a lot of reputation in the market and uh, i can ride on that reputation to attract uh, investors for the next round of the funding and uh, also who brings uh, various uh, needful uh, various uh, useful uh, insights to to further you know execute to evolve the company my further evolution my scaling so i was looking for that kind of uh, partner and uh, because of my because of my angel investment basically exposure i knew that excel would be that uh, that ideal partner it would it was just that i was taking some time to convince excel and bring uh, bring <laughs> anand and the team on board but uh, i was very clear that uh, excel is that ideal partner and i i and somehow i have to make it happen right um can, can i add to that sure. i think it's a both sides the investor as well as the founder like neeraj had done should do the due diligence really understand who they are getting into a relationship with we talked about it earlier because as he said a good investor and a good founder like that match is super important so you should talk about yourself people in in my like in my early days like 2016 17 20 early 2018 I didn't used to talk about my journey, right? I directly used to jump into this category, this problem, you know, these players, you know, and this much of opportunity. This is the problem statement. But, but I was not a part of that hmm. storytelling. And when I plugged myself into that storytelling, things started, you know, changing. When you put yourself exactly. out there, right. which you think founders should do more of, not just so that, reduce it to numbers. It's not and, that I manufactured mm. that, right? No, no, no. It was. But your, I, it, mm. it, 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 it's just that you know I was not putting myself into that storytelling. I was just talking about the problem, the category, the the, the uh, our USPs, the kind of platform we were trying to build. But I was absent from that entire storytelling. That who am I? Why? i am what i am and why i am doing this why i want to do this why i am passionate about this that was entirely missing and when I, when i plugged that perspective into the entire storytelling things started changing for us anything and, you want to add yeah, and in that moment i realized that hmm. people need to know who you are that is the most important that is the first question they are trying to answer if they are not comfortable with you whatever you are trying to build how exciting that is going to be they will not going to fund you most probably so f- first hoop they are trying to cross right is is getting comfortable with you if they are not comfortable with you most of the investors are not going to back you in irrespective of how exciting or how big opportunity you are you are trying to chase 
No, I fully, fully echo that. So going back, I think start with that and, and have a sharp story hmm. of how you came to that problem and then how you're solving it in a unique way that to your level best you can defend, right? So we talked about how Neeraj talked about it. And then any proof points that it's working. So if you look in their deck, they have a lot of proof points. 40% of their customers came through referrals. Their NPS, the net promoter score, that people like their product was very high, right? All these proof points help. Are you showing in the seed round, maybe you might not have all this, but by the series A, they had all this, right? So in the seed round, it's mostly the team hmm. and the problem. Hmm. Then by the series A, you have the team, the problem, a unique solution and some proof points that there are green sprouts, right? So yeah. you can see, and I think that's that's all uh, investors are looking for. That first meeting, and I tell this to every founder, is your whole thing is to ensure that you get who you're talking to, whether it's an investor or a potential co-founder or your employee, a future potential senior leader, get them excited to spend more time with you. Then hopefully you've got a successful next step. Then you keep going deeper and deeper. So this whole pitch craft, hopefully through that, that message resonates. So make it deep, but short and sweet so that you want more, right? So Got it. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the <laughs> other person, right? So. On that note, thank you very much, uh, Neeraj and uh, Anand. With that, we come to the end where we deconstructed Spinny's first ever pitch deck with you, both with the founder as well as the investor. Uh, we hope you found that useful. And in case you're looking for this deck, uh, it's downloadable on Seed to Scale. So check out the entire deck there. Money Control presents Pitchcraft in collaboration with Seed to Scale.